you need to ask yourself, are you ready for the journey? Are you ready for the hard work? Are you ready to make sacrifices? Running a business can be tough, so it makes sense that managing your business accounts shouldn't get in the way of what you do best. But it's easy with Sage Accounting Tools on your smartphone, your tablet, or your laptop. It's accounting for wherever you are on your business journey. Go to sage.co.uk forward slash journey. Sage, accounting for the journey. Yeah, this is your big partner, Al Kim. You listen to Sweet Lation Radio with Kimmy Kim on Jeremy West Live. Worldwide Jams, Vibes, and Radio on FavorNetwork.net. Follow them on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Elation Magazine. Or you can contact them at Elation Magazine at gmail.com. Elation Radio is known worldwide for lifting up people everywhere. So stay locked. And we'll be right back after this news. Ha!
Thank you for joining us here on Changes. I'm your host, Jim Hampton. Today, let's talk again about the good news. Let's talk about our Father who really loves you and I, shall we? Let's talk about our life today. Let's talk about a a regular Christian life. Do you ever feel like uh, life is just a continuous battle, a, a battle that maybe never ends? You have victories, but the battle seems to get just too heavy, too hard to fight, and that victories may be getting fewer and fewer and farther between. You might ask, should we Christians be having struggles? Should we have defeats? Well, there's a scripture that tells us a little about our life here on earth. It's John 16, 33. It says, Jesus was telling his disciples, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. That message is for us Christians as well. We are in this world. Yes, even God's children have to face troubles and trials, and you might call them giants in the land, giants that seem impossible at times to overcome or defeat. Some of you may remember, you may be older like like I am myself, but in the 60s there was a TV show, a television show called The Land of the Giants. The whole premise of the show was that There were seven people from Earth who had crash-landed on an unknown planet, and it it was a land much like our own Earth, except everything there was much bigger than normal. The humans and everything else were giants. Even the troubles they found there were giant troubles. Each week they battled against giant cats and mice and children and cars and had to be careful that they weren't stepped on by passerbys on the sidewalk. They were so small. It was kind of a strange program, and and believe me, the premise got a little tiring after about the second or third week. Just just like life here may be getting a little tiring, especially after a few battles have been fought. And life sometimes seems like nothing but a weary place where we constantly have to wear our armor and fight fight the foe. But the program itself raised a very good question. What would you or I do if if everything and everyone around us was a giant except us? Well, we do live in a world that's full of giants, you might say. There are things in our individual lives, things in our lives that are giants, things that over time become giants if we allow them to. There are things that can happen to us instantly and overnight. We can open a letter and it can change our whole life. We can answer a telephone call and everything we took for granted can be pulled out from under us. Things that on our own become giants and we can't defeat them by ourselves. We can't overcome them by ourselves. There are things that can overpower us, things that are so intense that it keeps us from being what God truly wants us to be. Because, you see, battles consume a lot of our time. We all seem to waste a lot of time fighting battles, precious time that we could be using to love on other people, to praise God for his blessings, to spend that time just bless others with the good news of Jesus or pass on God's love to those around us. We waste a lot of time because we forget who our source is. Not all the time, but there are times when we find ourselves in the middle of turmoil and we have forgotten to go to God first. We get caught up in the turmoil. We may spend a lot of time crying and and wringing our hands as we face what we consider total defeat that's facing us. But God has something better in mind for us because we're his children after all. Well, in the Old Testament, God sent his people of Israel to a place called the Promised Land. It was going to be a place to live where 
everything was going to be milk and honey and everything was going to be peaceful. But when God revealed the land and they began looking, they sent out scouts to look and the land was inhabited by giants. And God's people had to face and defeat these giants if they were going to have a decent and a peaceful and a, and a happy life, just like us. We Christians each day, as we live in a land of giants, we have problems. We have trials and tribulations all around us. You know, I've said this to some people, and they say, well, I don't. But just think back at the whole list of times You've had to come to God or to Jesus and pray, and and how many times have you called out to God? That list could be miles long. We do it without even remembering sometimes. God rescues us many, many times, times we don't write down, times we don't take the time to thank him. He solves many problems that are threatening us or threaten, threatening our family times have you called out his name in desperation? The answer to your problem seemed a long way off, but really the answer is a breath away, one word away. Just call Jesus or Father. He knows your name. He remembers you. He has never left us. In some cases, if we forget the Lord, the problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that our heart is breaking or our heart gets desperate for an answer or fear starts to take over us because our life is fragile. And without the Lord, I don't know where any of us would be in this life. In my life, I, I couldn't begin to count how many times I've called on God's name to save me from from what I considered destruction and to answer my many desperate needs to, to heal a sickness or, or to spare a loved one or drive the evil away from me or, or away from my home and my family. But looking back, I can say I'm still here. I'm living. I'm alive and well. And you can do the same thing. If you're listening to this broadcast today, you're still here. You're living. You're alive. And I don't know how well you are, but in Jesus, we are all well. Praise God. He is our source. God has been faithful to me and to my family and to you. Some of you, he has been faithful to many, to many, many years. Others are new Christians. He is beginning to be faithful as you become faithful to him. Should Christians be having trouble? Some would say, well, this isn't fair. After all, I'm a child of God. I shouldn't be having problems. But, you know, I'm afraid life like that, a world without problems, would be nice. But it just really isn't reality, is it? There is problems out there in the world. A world that's constantly peaceful, a world where we always get everything we want, a world where there's no problems. That isn't the world that we inherited from our distant relatives. You remember the Garden of Eden, don't you? Remember the old, good old Adam and Eve? Well, we can can confront them someday, perhaps, if we still want to when we get to heaven. You can blame the troubles of this world on them if you want to. But at this stage of the game, if you really look at it, this world that we call life, we could play the game of why did it happen or who's responsible, but what would it gain us at this stage? We're here, and we're stuck with it, aren't we? God never promised us a a rose garden. He never promised a cakewalk or a continuous party just to enjoy ourselves here. Life can really be hard and full of troubles. God never promised us Christians that life as a believer would be easy. In fact, he told us good fight, just like Apostle Paul did. He fought the good fight. But what
what did people in the Bible experience? You might say, well, let's that's enough about us. Let's let's see what the people in the Bible experience. Well, God told Moses that there would be blessings and enemies and trouble in the promised land, and there was. God told Joshua that the promised land would have its challenges and that he would have to face the enemy. Joshua was told by God that he would have to be strong and his people would have to be strong and courageous to face life's challenges. And they did. They found strength through the Lord. He gave them strength. He gave them direction, just like he can you and I. God promised Gideon that he would save Israel, but Gideon would have to face the Midianites and do battle and and defeat them. And God led Gideon and his people. And they did defeat the Midianites and many others of the ites that were there in that land. God gave them strength. God cared for them. He protected them and helped them. God anointed David David to be king over Israel, but still David had to fight Goliath and struggle with King Saul. So you see, troubles do follow God's children and even us today. They always have, and as long as we're on this earth, living in this world, we're, we're going to have to have troubles and trials, and we'll have to do battle. I'm not talking about doing battle with the sword. I'm talking about doing battle during and against our situations with God at our side in prayer, asking God to be with us, asking him to, remembering, remembering that God's made many promises to us and and reminding God, you've promised this and you've promised that. And I'm standing on your word, Father. I know you always keep your promises We shouldn't think of taking on any of our problems or bad situations or our our trials without first asking God to go into battle with us. The world is actually formed against us. The world is a fallen world, and it hates us. The prince of darkness, the one who goes about seeking whom he may devour, hates God's children. He hates you and I. So it's natural for the unsaved world to hate us also, and the problems of this unsaved world can be overwhelming, I know. I've experienced a lot of those spots, a lot of hills and valleys. You know, talking to my wife just the other day about situations we're going through, it seems like as a Christian, you're on the top of that mountain, looking down that valley, just for a very small moment, and then the ride down. You don't have to get to the the bottom of the valley to experience trouble. All the way down from that top point of that mountain down to that valley, you can experience troubles. And they can pick up speed as you get closer and closer to that deep valley. It was in John 15. He said, if the world hates you, You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. As you know, Jesus was persecuted. He died on that cross for us. We can't expect any less. We may not be crucified on a cross, but each day we're being crucified by the world. The world hates us. The devil hates us. And at times he will bring all the powers that he has against us. And we must stand firmly knowing that God loves us. He will never let us be defeated We call out his name, and the angels are summoned, and we will be rescued. Maybe not in the way we want to be rescued, but he will not let us be broken and defeated. Joy and blessing in following Jesus Christ, as you know. 
but we must do battles. It's not an automatic thing to be rescued. We have to remember God's promises and call on him, reminding him that he loves us. He knows it, but he wants to be told. I can remember times when I was in imminent danger, and I just called on Jesus' name and just said, Jesus, and I was rescued instantly. It was miraculous. It was uh, uh, it was a miracle. I was about to go over a cliff once in a car, and my wife and son, who was about six at the time, we all yelled out the name of Jesus instantly like it was a chorus of three. As we yelled it out instantly, that car stopped in midair and reversed itself, and we looked at each other and said, did you see that? I have never forgotten that, and I never will. God is alive and well on this planet. He rides the waves with us. Giants come in all different forms. King David faced a nine-foot giant, as you remember, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. It talks about this little boy, David, who was appalled and very angry that a giant heathen of a man that this giant would defy God's people and, and threaten David's family and friends with death and even with total destruction. David got righteously angry one day, and he said to this giant, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would defy the armies of the living God? Well, that's what you have to do in your heart when you're up against a giant in your life. You have to say, who is this Philistine that would defy the armies of the living God? Who would defy God? Who would defy God's child? I have God on my side, and I will call him into battle, and he will. David was just a little shepherd boy, as you can recall. And this defiant enemy stood against David, thinking that he would defeat him without any problem. But David had God on his side. David and God together, they would defeat this giant that stood in David's path. Little David had faith in his God. And it was from experience. David had had experiences in the past when, in the past when God had given him strength, supernatural strength, and when God had been with him and answered his, his needs. In 1 Samuel 17, 37, David said, God who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this giant Philistine. David knew from experience that God had never left his side in the past. When David needed extra strength, God was there to defeat the lion and the bear. Well, King Saul had, King Saul said to David, he said, go and Yahweh shall be with you as you fight that giant Goliath. And you know the story, David killed the giant. The giant was standing there between David and the army of Israel, but Israel was afraid to fight. They were fearful, but David had the faith that God would be on his side, and he was. God gave him supernatural accuracy with that sling that day and accuracy with that stone. It found its mark between the eyes of that Goliath, and he fell to his death. David knew what miracles God had performed in his life already. He remembered and he gave credit to his God for for the many times that God had rescued him from danger. That's what we need to do, folks. Remember the many times God has come to your rescue. Remember the many God has answered your prayers. Remember the many times you have called out Jesus' name when you were sitting at the bedside of a sick relative or friend, and God brought them through, and they're now living a a grateful life there with you. Remember the many times you thought you were defeated. You needed a job or 
you were sick yourself or you were lost, God found you, brought you to repentance, saved your life. That was a miracle itself. We, meet, we need to remember all the victories God has given each of us. When David remembered how faithful God had been to him in times of desperation, when David remembered God's history of his love and the care in his times of needs, that brought a lot of faith into David's life. The brain brought memories to David of, of courage and confidence and trust. And because he and God had a history together, David remembered how God had answered him many times when he had a need be, before and in his times of trouble. And this trust in God allowed David to prepare for this next great fight with confidence. And that's what we need to do, folks. Remember. Remember with fondness to, and, and acknowledge the times God has helped you. Let it conjure up courage and confidence and trust in God and allow it to prepare in you a confidence that God is going to bring you through this, this present, current problem that you may be going through. It gave times bring courage to your mind. Let them this courage drive out your doubt and your fears. That little David, little little boy that was a shepherd, was probably a scrawny little thing that everybody thought would be killed instantly by by Goliath. But with God on his side and God on your side, God on my side, we can face life's Goliaths. We can face face life's problems and trials and tribulations, and victory can be on our lips because God is the one who prepares us for battle. He is the one that fights alongside of us. We are a majority of two when we call on his name. So the next time that you find yourself facing a giant in your life, no matter what it is, Remember the story of that little David and his giant enemy, that Goliath. Remember the times that God has been with you in the past. Let that bring courage and confidence and trust in you. Prepare yourself for battle. Prepare yourself for victory. With God on David's side, he could not fail. With God on David's side, the enemy could not win. And if you're facing your own version of a Goliath today in your life, if problems and troubles of this world are snarling at you, if they're threatening you and threatening to defeat you, call on the name of the Lord. He will come to your side. He's just waiting for you to ask. He is armed and ready to act. He will rescue you. He'll fight for you. He'll change the circumstances for you. He'll open and close doors. He'll go before you and prepare the way. No matter how desperate or defeated you may feel, Jesus is the answer. He's the answer for you today and and in all your tomorrows. Don't forget him. So the Lord would say to you today, child of God, never think that you're alone in this world you're never alone and God is not a stranger you are his child he knows your every need believe that you are on his mind as we speak and I believe that he speaks your name every day remember his name he is Yahweh he's your God he's your father he's your Abba father he's your daddy He's your helper. Speak his name first thing each morning if you do. If you will, just each morning when you get up, speak his name. Start the day off by conjuring up that courage and that confidence and trust that you should have in him. Call out his name in faith with with expectation, 
call on him in your times of trouble and, and expect an answer. He's quietly waiting for you to call out in faith, to call out to him. Let him help you today, will you? He wants to help you. Trust in his love today. This is Pastor Jim Hampton saying, till next time, keep looking up and praising his name.